Hi viewers, welcome to this lecture on the question topology. So this is the topology which is uh, not a generalization of something which we have already learned in our analysis course but whatever the topologies we discussed so far those were the topologies which were which were in some sense the generalization of the topologies generalization of uh, whatever we have learned in anal either in analysis course or in the course and metric space. All right. So the the very interesting motivation uh, for the study of the quotient topology is the following. So if I consider, so basically we know one very useful technique technique that is the technique of cut and paste, uh, cut and paste, wherein we'll use that technique to construct various geometrical objects. For example, if I have a rectangular set whose length is say a and the breadth is say b, then uh, if I paste the uh, you know if i paste the edges or if i you know uh, let let me level this by m this by m dash this by n this by n dash now if i paste m with n and m dash and n dash if i paste m and n and m dash and n dash we get we get a geometrical object something like this right this will be b this is again a so again if i uh, paste this end of the uh, end of this particular cylinder to this end then what do I get I get uh, the geometrical object which looks like a donut right also called a torus so it will be something like this let me draw, draw it a bit nicely it looks something like this I'm really poor in drawing but this is what I get and this uh, will be B. All right. Similarly, if I have a disc which looks something like this, so using the rectangular sheet, I uh, uh, by cut and paste technique, I got a donut. Similarly, if I have a rectangle, if I have a disc something like this, which looks something like this, then using this disc, I can uh, using again the cut and paste technique, I can. Uh, convert this disc to to a surface of a ball or sphere or a surface of a sphere suppose the disc uh, looks something like this say this is the disc then uh, I can what I do is I just I take a point on the on this disc and then uh, and then I just collapse collapse entire boundary of this of this particular disk uh, to that single point so if i do so then i get uh, a geometrical object something like i get a geometrical figure which looks something like this okay it, it is spherical so but i as i'm really poor in drawing but you are understanding what i mean to say right so the end in uh in uh, the center of this, uh, the, this the you know this this region which is at the center of the disc, it appears uh, here at the end. Right? It appears below the surface of sphere or surface of the ball. Okay, so the figure is really uh, pathetic, but you understood. All right. So if I formalize uh, the these two constructions. Then that involves the idea of quotient topology. But before discussing the quotient topology, I'll introduce you the quotient map. Okay. I'll talk about the quotient map. So suppose I have a topological spaces uh, x and y. Then uh, suppose x and y are topological spaces. And suppose P is a function from a topological space X to Y, which is surjective. Then I say that P is a quotient map if it satisfies the, uh, the required condition that is, I'll discuss. So then P uh, is a quotient map. P is said to be a quotient map. P is said to be a quotient map. Provided that a subset u of y is open in y 
you uh, you observe as soon as uh, once I write the definition of question map, you immediately observe that a question map is, uh, in fact, every question map is continuous. So, provided a set u of y is open in y, if and only if p inverse u is open in x. So, what does it say? It says that if u is open in y, then p inverse u is open in x, implies p is continuous. So, every question map is continuous. Not only it is continuous, but also it satisfies one more condition that is if p inverse u is open in x for some set u then u is going to be open in y all right <clears throat> so so this is the strong continuity some mathematicians also call this as the quotient map as strong continuity okay and the equivalent uh, definition is that uh, instead of open you can replace uh, open by closed also so if uh, a subset so p is said to be a quotient map provided a subset b of y is closed in y if and only if p inverse b is closed in x right you can replace open by closed so that is again the equivalent definition of quotient map you can prove that one implies the other all right so equivalently what you can say is that uh, p from x to y is a quotient map in the same context that x and y are topological spaces and p is a surjective map then i say that p is a quotient map provided a subset a set b of y is closed in y if and only if p inverse of b is closed in x all right this is another equivalent definition of a quotient map so let us prove that these two definitions are equivalent. So, so call this as definition 1, call this as definition 2. So assume that 1 is true. Assume that 1 holds. That means I am assuming that P is a quotient map implies, means that uh, I am assuming that P is a quotient map and by that I mean uh, for any set u of y which is open in y if and only if p inverse u is open in x so i want to show that uh, a set b of y closed in y if and only if p inverse b is closed in x so so let us start with a closed set b of y let b be uh, closed in y let b is closed in y then this implies what uh, what we can say about y minus p this is open in y so this implies that p inverse of y minus b okay, this is true if and only if right so this is again true if and only if p inverse y minus b is open in x because this this is true from one no from our assumption one but this is true if and only if uh, p inverse of y minus p inverse of b is open in x Again, this is true if and only if. What is p inverse y? It is x. So x minus p inverse of b is open in x. And this is true if and only if p inverse b is closed in x. Right? So I proved, I started with, a, so I proved that b is closed in y if and only if p inverse b is closed in x by assuming 1. Similarly, by assuming 2, you can prove 1. So that is your exercise. I prove that 1 implies 2. You prove that 2 implies 1. Then uh, you, you can say that these two definitions are equivalent. 2 implies 1 is also a similar kind of, you have to do the similar kind of thing. Okay, it's not so difficult. So you can do it easily. Okay. Now I'll talk about what is meant by an open map and closed map. If uh, again definition, if f is a function from a topological space x to a topological space y, then if uh, f is a function between topological spaces. then f is said to be then f is said to be an open map 
if for any subset a u of uh, x which is open in x implies f inverse sorry f of u is open in y if for any open set u of x uh, the set f the set f u is open in y then i say that f, in that case f is uh, called an open map similarly i have a definition of a closed map which says that uh, okay, in the same context f is said to be closed f is said to be a closed map if for any closed set e of x the set uh, e of x the set sorry f of a is closed in y then i say that f is a closed map all right okay now if uh, p is a function so looking into owing to this definition if p is a function from x to y where x and y are topological spaces and if p is continuous and uh, if p is surjective and furthermore if a p uh, is uh, suppose is an open map then what we can say about p what does this imply then P is continuous, P is surjective. P is continuous means for any uh, open set U of Y, P inverse U is open in X. And P is an open map means for any open set U of X, uh, P of U is open in Y. So together, th those together implies that uh, P is a quotient map. Right? Similarly, uh, if P is a map from X to Y, which is continuous and surjective, and also if uh, it, is a, it is a closed map, then also in that case, then P is a quotient map. Because it, if, it is a, if it is an uh, open map and continuous, then continuity and open map together implies a one, first uh, first definition it together satisfies the first definition and continuity and closed map together satisfies the second definition so hence it will be a quotient map in both the cases okay. if you want to see it precisely then you can do it but uh, but you can quickly observe it also right all right so next is the definition of what is called a saturated when we say that a subset of a topological space is saturated so we'll see one more definition uh, we say that a subset c of x is saturated so with respect to the surjective map say p from x to y if c contains uh, the set c contains every set if c contains every set p inverse a singleton y that it intersects If for some y, small y, if uh, P inverse of y intersection C is non-empty, then it implies P inverse of y. If, uh, if C is saturated, then it implies P inverse y is contained in C. That is what the definition says.
And uh, so now saying that P is a quotient map is, is equivalent to saying that P is continuous and P uh, maps saturated open set of X to open set of Y. Okay. So that is also the equivalent definition. You can, you can check it. So, so another definition of quotient map is the following using the above definition. So it says that so in the same context P is a quotient map uh, if P is continuous and P maps saturated open set suffix saturated open sets of X to open sets of Y. Or you can say that P is a quotient map if P maps saturated closed sets of X to closed sets of Y. Okay. All right. So let for, for an example, if I consider X to be a subspace of R, suppose uh, that is the closed interval 0, 1 union 2, 3. Suppose if I consider this as a subspace of R and, uh, and suppose further that Y is the another subspace of R that is 0, 2, this is another subspace of R, then uh, the map and the map P which is defined from say X to Y which is defined by P of x is equal to x for x in 0, 1 and it is equal to x minus 1 for x in 2, 3. All right. Okay. <clears throat> then this map is well defined, right? This map is well defined. Map. And uh, it is it is a surjective map. One can see that it is a surjective map. So observe that P is surjective. Also observe that it is continuous and P is closed. So continuous you can uh, uh, conclude using the pasting lemma if it is possible to use. I think it is possible to use pasting lemma here. So you can also show that P is a closed map. Hence, these three together implies P is a quotient map. All right. This three together implies P is a quotient map. Now I'll define what is called a quotient topology. So definition. So if X is a space, X is a topological space and is any set. And if P from X to A is a surjective map, I'm actually talking about the quotient topology, right? Suppose P from X to A is a surjective map, then we say that P is a quotient, then uh, then if this is the case, then one can see that there exists a one, exactly one topology on A. So A is any set. And if I have the information that X is a topological space and A is any set, and P is a mapping from X to A, which is a surjective map, then one can see that there exists exactly one to, uh, topology, tau and A, relative to which P is a quotient map relative to which P is a quotient map. And that topology tau on A is called quotient topology induced by P. Okay. Uh, so it is called quotient topology induced by P. Okay. So here, uh, what is tau? That is what I have to uh, understand, right? What is tau? 
So how to define tau so that uh, it is going to be a topology on A and relative to which uh, P is also a question map. All right. So, so, so you just consider, we consider tau is equal to suppose uh, if we consider tau is equal to those subsets u of a such that p inverse u is open in x okay then this tau uh, is in fact uh, the only one topology relative to p is a question map so i have to show that tau is indeed a topology so that you can easily do phi is there in tau because phi is a subset of x and p inverse phi is equal to phi which is open in x x is a topological space and also x is there in tau so it is your exercise to check that so not x but a is there in tau because p inverse a is whole of x and x is open in x so you check that tau is a topology on a it's not very difficult. All, all right. Tau is a topology on A. Okay. So next is the uh, next uh, example is the following. If uh, P uh, is a function. Uh, from R to say, let us consider P to be a function from R to the three point set A, B, C uh, defined by suppose the map P is defined by P of X is equal to say A if uh, X is greater than zero, it is B if X is less than zero, and it is equal to C if X is equal to zero. Then uh, one can see that the quotient topology on A induced by P is, uh, if I denote it by tau, then what will be, okay. So let us try to see what is the quotient topology induced by P. So the quotient topology induced by P on the set ABC, which is equal to A suppose, is we know, we know, we already know that it is the set of all u subset of A such that P inverse u is open in R. All right. So now here, if I consider phi as a subset of A, then P inverse phi is a whole of A. P inverse phi is phi, so phi is open in R. So phi is there. So if this is tau, then it is phi is there. Also, A, A is there because P inverse A is the whole of R and R is open in itself A is there. Point, uh, okay. What are the subsets? Okay. This is also there. Why this is there? Because what is P inverse of singleton A? P inverse of singleton A is the set 0, comma infinity and this is open in R. This, is, this set is there. Also, ABC is there. That is A itself, so no need to write that. Singleton B is there, right? Because singleton B, P inverse of singleton B is minus infinity comma zero, and this is open in R. And furthermore, A, A B is there, set A B, because P inverse of set A B is what? It is uh, the same set as minus infinity comma zero union zero comma infinity. All right, A, B is there. Now, singleton C is not, not there because P inverse of singleton C is singleton zero, which is not open in R. So, is there any other set? Yeah, that's all right. This is the topology induced by P on A. That is the quotient topology. This is the quotient topology.
and with respect to this question topology p uh, we can say as p a question p is a question map by definition so in the next lecture we'll talk about the quotient space and uh, some more related results and also at the end we uh, talk about the topological groups okay so with this i'll stop